and we are live what is going on guys happy wednesday how's everybody doing tonight a couple people in the chat just started dosing perfect timing to set up your first doser excellent so if you haven't noticed most of my live stream topics basically feed off of whatever questions i'm getting that week and i've explained a few times on how to dose how do you know when to start dosing how do you set up a doser manual dose all that type of stuff when you first set up a tank so that's today's topic uh reef god click clacks reefer ray can old boy freshwater 504 gal gal what is going on guys falcon quick hot ashes welcome reefer ray can ozzy ozzy Zavecki's reef belgium nana man excellent guys hopefully you guys are all having a fabulous day today a bunch of people keep asking for my coral updates on all the stuff I got in Niagara. That will come soon. It's been a crazy couple weeks. Uh, what's going on, Ryan? Philip? So, I have so many videos to edit still. Um, I still have went to went in Toronto, went to Candy Corals, Frag Box, uh, Reef Wholesale. Uh, did a behind-the-scenes video with Ripley's Aquarium. I got so many videos I have to just get to editing. So, lots, lots of good stuff coming. So keep an eye out for that. Um, next Wednesday, I'm going to be in Orlando for Reef of Palooza. So I won't have a regular live stream, but I did, however, have a call with Mr. J from Ecotech to check out his tank. So I'm just, I kind of just recorded it. So it's kind of like a live stream. So I'm going to release that at this time next week so that I'm not leaving you guys hanging. But otherwise, yeah, that should be good. And, uh, in a week in a little bit reef plus orlando so if anyone is coming to reef palooza come say hi i always love meeting people it's always a lot of fun so if you're going to be there make sure you guys come say hi afterwards uh do do do, do. so lots of people rolling in the chat hello hello all right so you just got your first saltwater tank stuff's starting to roll you're starting to add corals to the tank one of the first questions you always get is, do I need to dose my tank? Um, first of all, you're not going to know unless you test. So you do, if you're starting to add coral, you want to get basic test kits. Um, I have all mine, I'll show you guys in a minute. So you're not going to know unless you test, right? Now, if you have a small tank with a bunch of soft corals, do a weekly water change, not an issue. Um, even, <laughs> you got stickers, I do have stickers. Um, <laughs> If you do have a large tank, same thing, you know, that water volume, if you have lots of easy corals or you just have some little tiny frags, like that may, just your water change alone could very well keep your tank stable and you're good to go. Now, if you are getting more than I'm going to say about a 1 dkh swing between it, so over the week, if you test your tank, oh, another pro tip, get a kit to organize all of your test kits. This is um, a Stanley one. Put a link in the description to the one I use, but um, basically, nice little kit. Put all your stuff in it. Makes your life nice and easy. So for testing, um, basic test if you don't have one. Uh, the Red Sea Foundations, I think. I don't know. I liked it, but that one, calcium elk mag. I think that's the best bang for your buck. However, favorite alkalinity tester is the Hanna one. Super quick and easy. So if you are getting more than a one DKH swing in about a week, I would start to consider dosing. Um, same thing, because you can, if you do a water change, you know, it ups your parameters, like there is really high, like, reef salts, like I know Red Sea Pro, or Instant Ocean Reef Crystals, any of those type of ones, they have elevated levels, and the whole point of that, if you're not dosing, or you have very light color load, you can just do your weekly water changes, and you're replacing a lot of those minerals, and, but there is going to be a point where you need to start dosing, and that's what you're going to do. So we need to test. If you don't test, you're never going to know for sure. Now, if you can be really fancy and get automated testers, most people starting out don't want to spend the money. So super basic test kits, a good way to go. Uh, love my Hannah elk. Excellent. What's up, mad dogs? Okay. Hannah, I get asked all the time, which test kits do I use? Which ones do I like, etc. Um, I have the Red Sea ones. I use those for the elk one is kind of a backup if I ever don't trust the Hannah. Um, the two I'd recommend the most is the alkalinity and the phosphates. <laughs> you can't see the green screen. Yeah. Um, this invisible test kit will tell you your phosphates. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, for magnesium, I generally use the red C one. Um, calcium, 
The newer HANA one works well. The older HANA one without the TIE Trader is more of a pain, to be precise. The newer one works pretty well. Aside from that, um, Red Sea one works pretty well, too. So those are kind of like the main go-to ones that I use for most of it. Uh, nitrate, I use the Red Sea one. A little bit of a pain because it takes about 10 minutes to wait for it to change color. Uh, I've been testing every day. My elk is 13.7 down from 13.9 on Monday. pH 7.8. How can I lower elk without dropping pH? To lower your alkalinity, you can either do a water change with a low decay salt or just let it drop naturally. Um, I wouldn't purposely try and do a bunch to lower it, but let let your tank slowly consume it. Uh, Revaholic says NO3, NIOS for NO3 and 12 I've never used NIOS test kits, but I've heard really good things. Apparently, they're really easy to read, especially for the phosphate one or the nitrate ones. So that was good to hear. Uh, going to be a good topic. Finally having to change my dosing. Always under the impression that you always dose elk. Okay, so most people say to dose them in equal amounts. When I was dosing, I always found I had to dose a little more elk than I did calcium. So I was never 100%. It was probably like 55 mils of elk to 50 mils of calcium type of thing. So it wasn't a huge swing, but it was always a little bit off. Now there is lots of kits or dosing regimes that are designed to be like if you look at Triton or one of those they're designed to be dosed in a balanced ratio um, those ones I don't know if I'd really want to mess with it too much producer reef welcome JW welcome so even with the calcium reactor I it is essentially dosing equal amounts 24 hours a day now I don't necessarily worry about what my calcium is I test it once a month just to make sure it's all good but as long as the elk's in check, I just kind of let the calcium do whatever it does. And it's usually a little on the higher side. Uh, what do you think of dosing Tropic Marine all for Reef? So all for Reef is all in one. Um, I was actually talking to him at the show. I didn't have a chance to film some video on it, but kind of a cool product. Uh, they designed it in such a way that it doesn't precipitate out, but you have one bottle to dose, which makes it really easy. Uh, what's the ideal Cal number to have? I'm assuming that's calcium. So. SPS tend to like a little bit lower on the elk scale. LPS like a little higher. Um, so some people claim that elevated elk levels will grow faster. Maybe. Um, I kind of just go right in the middle. So I shoot for around eight to eight and a half elk for calcium. Kind of 400 to 420 is what I like. Um, that range could be 380 to 500 say, but you know, 400, 425, 430, somewhere in that range. And magnesium, 1250, 1350, somewhere in that range. So it's kind of what I shoot for personally. Um, any recommendations for a fallow tank? I have elk swings because my nutrients are lower and my corals seem to be using more. It's not a fallow tank if you have corals. Uh, seem to, uh, lower and my corals seem to be using more. I started ghost feeding to help. If you. Yeah, if you have corals in your tank, you either gotta up your water changes or you gotta start dosing. Um, now, a really easy way if you want to get into dosing is to use Kalkwasser or calcium hydroxide. Uh, most people will put it in your ATO container. I think it's two teaspoons per gallon. I think I said tablespoons in the past, but I think it's teaspoons. So correct me if I'm wrong. It's been ages since I've used Kalkwasser. But basically, Kalkwasser, you just mix a couple of teaspoons into your um, per gallon. Um, you can start lower, work your way up, but it doses calcium and alkalinity kind of balanced your tank. Now there's some downfalls. Uh, one but big benefit for a lot of people is it raises your pH because lots of people do struggle with pH issues. Now when it's dosing your tank evenly, um, you get a bit higher pH, which is good for coral growth. And you don't really have to worry about dosing. I've seen tons of people run their tank for ages off just calc alone. So until you have a really packed reef, that could be a really simple one. Now one downfall is that it's harder on your pump. So you have to clean your ATO pumps and stuff a lot quicker. What's going on, Kevin? Thoughts on Randy Holmes Farley's recipe? I have not actually looked at his in a while, but Randy has a lot of good stuff and all his articles are really good. So I would say go for it. You're using Aqua Forest. Yeah, Aqua Forest is a pretty popular one. My buddy Brad's using that and he seems to be very happy with it so far. Okay, so Calc Wasser, super easy way to do it. Uh, the next one up would be two-part. 
two part you can control your different elements now you can 100 percent dose it manually you don't need a doser however it makes your life easier um one lady wincy who i met she doses her tank currently she's dosing by hand i think i may have talked her into a doser but she's been dosing her tank by hand for years like 230 gallon jam-packed sps reef beautiful tank so you do not need a doser it does make your life easier if you're not home every day to do it or you're gonna forget about it you know spend the 70 hundred bucks on a doser um the one the cheapest best bang for your buck um i think i threw a link in the description to amazon it is like 60 bucks 60 to 90 bucks depending on where you're located but the jabo doser it's hard to beat if you're on a budget it's hard to beat that for the price there's a lot of nice fancier dosers out there but the jabo is like tried and true and pretty darn reliable for the price it's hard to beat um how about calcium reactors calcium reactors so calcium reactor is obviously the next step up from dosing so you got calcwaster, you got your two part, and next would be calcium reactor. Calcium reactor is the most expensive to get into it. Um, generally, people say it's more beneficial on a bigger tank. I don't really know. It's, you can't really say by t tank wise, right? It could be you know a 50 gallon or a 500 gallon. It really depends on coral load. A lot of people rate stuff on tank size, which I think is. Kind of, kind of hit or miss, right? Because I could have a 500-gallon tank with a couple tiny corals in it, or I could have a 50-gallon jam-packed wall-to-wall, and it's going to consume, you know, 10 times more than that big tank. So it's something you got to kind of look at. Uh, Ryan dosing BRS three-part for years, coral box, Wi-Fi doser, pretty happy, low maintenance. Uh, make sure the air stays out of the lines. Yeah, so with the coral box, I've heard a few people say they've had little air leaks within the lines. Um, it does come with some little check valves. The original ones weren't as good. They have the new ones now that are a lot heavier duty. Um, biggest things is make sure you have really good connections. Make sure there's no air in your lines. And that goes with basically any brand or any type of dosing kit. Um, I still dose by hand. There you go, Paul. Uh, I really want to release this video soon um, about this one lady because her tank is gorgeous. So many nice massive colonies and she does it all by hand. It's such a great contrast to my over techiness. It's, I love it. So I will, once I'm back, I'll edit that video and put that one out. You guys are going to love her tank. It's amazing. Um, do, 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 do. Um, as for what brand you dose, a lot of people ask brand too. Like on my last tank, I was doing like super ghetto bulk brand industrial grade just because I got it for next to nothing. Like massive five gallon bin in my shed of like alkalinity and ca or calcium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, bicarbonate. Um, and it works. I mean, I've seen people dose, you know, Randy's recipe and stuff, just dosing baking soda. You know, you can bake it, use that. Tons of ways you can do it. Uh, would you recommend the Jabo for a smaller tank, like around 20, or would you go better if I get a BRS doser? I've heard a little more accurate. Okay, so BRS doser doses 1.1 mils a minute. So it's a very slow pump. So you can put it on just like a standard timer, and then you control your dose based on how many minutes you provide it. Now there's definitely advantages to dosing slow. If you dump in too much too fast, I mean, it could precipitate out. Uh, the other thing when you're dosing is to stagger it. So if you dose calcium, you know, wait 20, 30 minutes before you dose your elk or ideally, you know, a little later. Now, if you're doing big dosings, then that could be more relevant, right? You want to space it out more. If you're doing like using a doser and you're doing a mill here, you know, 20 minutes later, you do another mill. It's not going to make a difference. It's not enough to really worry about. Um, yeah, core box doser was pretty good. I have one of those too. Um, oh, but I'm getting a doser, no doubt. So dosers make your life easy. If you work from home or you're retired, you're home every day, you can access your tank, maybe hand dosing is not a big deal. Um, if you have a job and you're out and about, you know, you're sometimes at home for a day or two, certain things, then a doser or something to keep your tank stable is really going to pay off, right? End of the day, stability is what makes a happy tank. So having a doser keeps it stable, right? It's getting the same amount every day. Now, how to know how much to dose. There's lots of calculators online. Uh, you're asking about turf algae. We'll get to that one in a minute there. I'll just paste that notepad so I don't forget what it. Okay. So how much do you need to dose? If you go to Marine Depot's website, BRS's site, there's a ton of dosing calculators. Just Google it. One will come up. You tell it approximately what volume of water your tank is. So, okay, so my tank's 100 gallons. Uh, my DKH is this and I want it to be this so you got to test your tank and 
So say your tank, you test your tank, your DKH is seven. You want it to be eight. So you'll say, okay, here's hundred gallons. My tank is here, I want it here. And then you tell it what you're using to dose and it's gonna recommend how much you can need to dose your tank. Um, so what you do, you dose that amount. If you're using a doser, you program, okay. So say I need 20 mils to go from seven to eight DKH. So I would say, okay, doser, dose 20 mils per day. And ideally, I personally like to break it up as many times as possible. So if the doser lets you do 12 or 24, I like to split up as much as possible, right? Keeps more consistent. So it's gonna dose that much to your tank over the next day or so. Now in 24 hours from now, so if I if I set this up, say go at test at three o'clock today, tomorrow you wanna test at three again. The big important thing is to test at exactly 24 hours. Test your tank again and you see how much it changes. If it you know, if what you tested yesterday is the exact same 24 hours later, your doser is dialed in, you're good to go. You know, you can maybe let it go one more day and test it, you're good. If there's a variation, then okay, maybe you need to add or subtract a mill or two from your doser and then do it again. So you kind of got to go a couple different steps like that. So when you're first dialing it in, it may take a day or two, a couple testings, but then after, you know, it's solid for a day or two, okay, man, maybe you test once a week. So you can be a little more relaxed and space it out once things are kind of dialed in. All right, so two quick questions. Have turf algae, what to do? Uh, someone's asking, what is turf algae? So if you have hair algae, it's the big long strings. Turf algae is like very, like a little furry carpet almost. It's, it stays very close to the rock. Um, to treat it, usually most allergies are caused from either A, too much light, or B, a nutrient imbalance. So usually water change is always a good thing. Um, if you have a very long photo period, reduce it. So your lights aren't on for endless hours. That definitely helps. Um, the other thing you can do is spot treat it with peroxide or use a product like if you're using peroxide, one mil per 10 gallons, don't exceed that. Uh, Vibrant works pretty well for killing a lot of allergies. It may or not take out your refugium, keep that in mind. But uh, doser versus calcium reactor. Dosing is cheap up front. Um, and your, how much you dose as your corals grow is going to get more progressively over time. So you're going to use more and more two-part. Um, Long-term, calcium reactor is expensive up front, but it's fairly cheap to run, maintain long-term. So you're spending a bunch of money now or you're spending a little more ongoing. So it's a trade-off. Uh, is it better to dose calcium mag, KH, DH at different times of the day? So I've at one point in time, I dosed calcium in the day, alkalinity at night. And I partially did that to raise my pH at night. Um, now, if, if you were doing it, I just like to dose them 24 hours a day. Um, I set it up for a while when I had the Neptune dose and I had the Alcatronic and I had it dosing every 15 minutes. So it does like one point whatever mil and then 50, 10 or so minutes later, it dosed the other one and every 50 minutes it was dosing. So, and it was actually pretty even on the graph. So I personally would just dose it 24 hours a day if possible. Um, I was trying to mimic a calcium reactor to, more or less. Is there a downside to using a calcium reactor on a smaller tank other than initial cost? Um, not really, no. The one nice thing, even if it is a bit bigger, it kind of grows with you. You can get a bigger tank, you can still use it. Um, cost is honestly the only downside I see. Uh, the other one small downside is it's a bit louder than a dosing pump, right? If you have a dosing pump, you only have one little pump that goes every, however often it doses. For a calcium reactor, you have your recirculating pump. Um, you have a feed pump, so you just have more plugs, more equipment. So there's a little more energy consumption from it and a little more pumps that may or may not appear, you might notice. Uh, so yeah, honestly, cost is the biggest thing though. Funny, they claim on reach of reef, Vibrant won't kill your macro. Okay, so when I used Vibrant, I had a turf scrubber and it will kill hair algae, which is what turf scrubber is. I have not tested on Chato, so I don't know if it kills Chato or not. Uh, when long dosing intervals, sometimes a quick siphon occurs. Not sure me on that one. Is it difficult to dial in a calcium reactor? It's not hard per se. It's more just testing. It's the same as dialing in a doser. So you need to kind of dial in approximately 
you know where you think it is test your tank wait 24 hours if it changes okay you're out you need to add more or less from your custom reactor once you can test wait 24 hours test again and it's the exact same result you know your reactor is dialed in you're good to go but if there's a swing then you want to change it now you kind of can bump your levels up and down with the calcium reactor but you don't really want to so someone was bugging me earlier because in the thumbnail i was like hand dosing you're like you don't hand dose if you are trying to bump up your levels or have it set somewhere once your calcium reactor is dialed in you can make a manual adjustment and then you know your dialed in calcium reactor is going to keep it there so that's kind of the bigger advantage doing it that way um when manual dosing how much time should i give between calcium magnesium alkalinity i would generally wait 20 30 minutes at least i mean more times better but i'd wait at least 20 minutes on a bigger dose uh bees reef vibrant won't kill chato at the maintenance dose but you're more aggressive with it than it definitely will okay there you go so a little bit is okay large amounts may or may not lose it uh doo -doo -doo. yeah not if you're using the Kimura separate motor so the Kimura you don't need it but it is nice because you can just walk off and go bloop one mil change done now the thing with the Kimura is you still have to tweak it or there is an ongoing cost you know you got to replace the tubes every four or five months and the roller once a year-ish at least that's how i rationed it out uh can you please chat about how to rebalance imbalances in calcium and elk with two-part your easiest what's going on american reefing your easiest way to fix it if it's out of balance is to honestly just do a couple large water changes that's going to reset all your system and you go back to dosing now one thing to keep in mind is if your magnesium is out of whack it's going to really mess with your levels um, having a proper magnesium level and that, you know, 1250 to 1350, 1400, somewhere in that range keeps your calcium and elk in balance. So if one of them's way out of whack, that check your magnesium because there's a good chance that could be out of whack. Um, also your salinity. If your salinity is low, that's also going to mess with your levels to an extent. So if something's out of whack, check your salinity, check your magnesium, make sure those two are, you know, 1.025 or 0 0.06 or 35 PPT. Um, yeah, and make sure magnesium's at a, you know, proper range. That's one of the biggest things. Uh, Reef Dudes, for a tank your size, if you're... That seems half there. <laughs> what is going on, Rosie? All right, what else did I miss? Hand dose elk at night will drip it. Hand dump calcium in mid-afternoon. That works. Yeah, so... Magnesium, think of magnesium as the referee. It's the referee to keep the two in balance. And if the rest's not there, stuff can skew out of balance quite a bit. Just enjoying the best reefing channel in the world. Ho, ho, ho. Thanks for the awesome compliment there, Rossi. Much appreciated. Uh, what's the best way to lower elk when running a calcium reactor? Okay. So to lower your elk, you got two options. One, you could potentially dose less to the tank. Um, now, the other option is... Okay, if you have a, something like a Kimura, an accurate adjustable pump, you just turn it down a bit. If you don't and you're using like a Maxi Jet or an Aqualifter, one of those type of pumps, then you can adjust it through your pH inside the reactor. So if you want to make your life easy, you have a pH probe in your reactor. And by the lower the pH is, the higher the alkalinity is inside the reactor. So if you want to lower the alkalinity inside the reactor, you raise that pH. So it's going to make your alkalinity lower, which your effluent is what you call the liquid that drips from the calcium reactor into the tank. So you're dripping in a lower elk solution. So that's another way to do it. But yeah, only just pick one, either messing with pH or messing with flow. Just pick what, let's set the other one, forget it, and then just mess with the other one. Makes your life much easier. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. In the midst, 35 gallon tall hex with a canister filter. I'm thinking softies. That would be a nice easy tank, Kevin. Uh, thinking about a new cove calcium reactor. Nice. The best part of Wednesday is brought to you by Reef Tears. Thanks, Kevin. Much appreciated. And Kevin, extra shout out to you. Kevin is one of, one of two of my Patreons. Thank you, Kevin. Much appreciated. And I will see you in a week at Reef Palooza. So if anyone's going to Reef Palooza, Make sure you come say hi. It's going to be an awesome weekend, and I'm very excited for it. Where in the sump is the best place to place dosing lines? Okay. 
you want to dose into a high flow area. You don't want to, you want to mix. If you dump a bunch of elk in right in front of your return pump, it gets sucked in, you could be blasting your corals with alkalinity and you could actually, you know, have some tissue recession. It could potentially harm corals if you're dosing too much directly concentrated onto them. So it's a good idea to have a power head in your sump area wherever you're dosing. Um, that water agitation is gonna help mix it up into the water very quickly. Um, so that, that's a good idea, you know, get a cheap $20 power head, put it in wherever you're dosing in your sump and you'll be good. With a CO2 reactor, I dose the fluent prior to my refugium. So it's right before the baffle. So that flows into the refugium and it flows through the chato. Now dosing my fluent to the chato area is going to give the extra nutrients to grow. So that, ex that little bit of CO2 that's still left in the fluent is going to be like an extra fuel source for the chato. So that's the best way to do it, in my opinion, if you have a refugium and a calcium reactor. <laughs> am I rich? Am I single? I am married, Rossi. Sorry. <laughs> See ya, wrap. All right, Greg. Should be good. Um, could you also shut off the CO2 for some period? You could, but it would be likely easier to just turn down your CO2. So it's just your bubble counts going in slower rather than doing it. Now, if you have a pH probe inside your calcium reactor and a controller, you can tell it turn on and off if it falls outside of whatever CO2 range or pH range you're trying to keep it at. So that goes a long ways into making your life easy. Kind of works as a bit of a contingency plan if your bubble count is too high or too low. They'll kind of control it as well. Uh, what if your salt has higher mag? Reef crystals of 1450. 1450 is okay. Uh, if you're too high of magnesium, like if you're getting up to like 15, 1650, 1700, some inverts don't like really high magnesium. Um, 1450 is okay. Honestly, 1250 to 1450 is a pretty happy range. Thanks for the DIY refuge lay videos. Thanks so much, Mikhail. Thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. Camille Kawaski. Kawasaki. Kawasaki? Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, how do you guys manage cell creep? I honestly don't really get cell creep on anything. There is the odd little bit that gets on my screen top. I just take a wet cloth and just wipe it off. Uh, you don't want the salt creep necessarily falling into your tank. Um, just like anything concentrated, you don't want that salt falling on a coral. But yeah, just take paper a little damp paper towel and just scoop it out and throw it away. You could put it in your water, like in your sump or somewhere if you wanted, but just make sure it's not hitting the coral so think it falls back in. Is it possible to keep coralline out of a retank if you quarantine everything and will it get in? It will likely find a way in. I don't think you can avoid it. The biggest thing is like just make sure you clean your pumps, your glass, all that type of stuff often enough that it's not going to cause a big impact. Camille, thank you. Uh, is it possible to keep Coraline? Uh, watch that one. Happen to unique corals when they turned off the light. Uh, do you have any tips on coral propagation? Uh, I should do a video on that one. Uh, one of the biggest things, coral propagation. Um, SPS are pretty darn easy, to be honest. I mean, you just break off a branch or use some bone cutters, snip it off. Something like a chalice, you could break it. Um, you want to ideally go around the eyes on it. Um, the eyes are basically this little mouth, like you can see the one behind me, all the little spots on it. You'd want to frag around those. Um, it, it is a good idea to give corals after you frag them an iodine dip, it could kind of do it. If you're getting into harder stuff, uh, like a wet saw is really nice to have. One day I'd love to get one of those, but they're basically like a glass or a tile saw that uses a diamond blade that will cut through it. But most corals, like Zoas, I mean, you could just cut it with a razor blade. Um, I always like to use a brand new blade. Uh, you can buy big packs of scalpel blades, fairly inexpensive, and just try and cut under it, ideally. But I think maybe I'll do a fragging corals video or stream. That could be a good one. Looking forward to meeting you all at Rap. Heck yes. Greg, make sure you come say hi. If any guys are at Reef Palooza, definitely come say hi. It'll be fun to meet, hopefully meet a bunch of you guys. Um, open tank, skimmer collects it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, would you consider 380 calcium low? I would say 380 is on the low end, but you're still okay there. Um, 380 to 450 is probably about the range where I'd say I wouldn't worry about it. Somewhere in that range is okay. 
I've heard... I don't know if it's true. I read somewhere that too high of calcium can inhibit growth to an extent. I've seen it like 500 plus. I personally can't say I've noticed an issue there when I've had it up higher, but I have read that. So take that with a grain of salt. But um, on the low side, I mean 380, again, it's on the low end, but I think you're still okay though. I wouldn't want to go too much lower than that though. Is it normal to see grease around the heads of the rollers on the Kimura? Yes, okay. So on the Kimura, there is a bit of a grease or a lube on it and it does spin. Now, after a few months, mine actually got a little louder, a little bit squeaky. So I used um, like a food safe lubricant. What I use in the coffee machine? Some kind of a grease anyway. So I went over and like re-greased mine. I wiped off paper towel and re-greased it and then it was silent again. So at 100%, the Kimura does have a grease on it and you may need to do a little maintenance and re-grease it once in a while. At least after three or four months, mine got a little squeaky and it was bugging me. So just unhooked it, paper towel, wiped it all down and gave a little grease. Then it was silent again. Now, the only one tiny complaint out of the Kimura is at certain speeds, you will get some weird harmonic sounds. Like it'll be like a digital, like a different RPM. So I purposely only use it at like for me, 23 and lower was loud. If I went to 24 mils and higher, it was quieter. So. I just made it work to make sure it's higher. Most people probably would not notice or care. I, full disclosure, I'm like OCD with silent tank. So if you guys watch me for a while, you probably know that already though. Uh, so Rossi's saying needed above 420. Haven't had issues with high calcium or high mag. Yeah, the only issue I know with high magnesium is if it's super duper high, it can affect snails or shrimp. Like 1600, 17, usually why someone have it so high is because uh, one of the previous methods for fighting baropsis was to have really high magnesium and but that one of the downsides was the potential impact to invert so it was the one, one of the theories about beating baropsis back in the day um so you're saying would say lower elk is better with lower nutrients okay Low elk, low nutrients, high elk, high nutrients. Easy way to think of it. So whatever range you pick, if you're a heavy nutrient tank, have a higher. If you're on the low nutrient side, keep your elk lower. Kind of keeps things in balance. But I mean, if you want to push that gas pedal more, you know, you need more light, you need more flow. So it's kind of a mix of it all. But the biggest thing, pick somewhere and stay there. Just keep it stable. Biggest advice, secret reef tanks, stability, 100%. Okay. Uh, now today has to be a fairly quick stream because I got a work event to have to head to pretty quick. Um, if you guys have any questions you want me to answer quickly, fire them out in chat. Um, hey man, all right, would you say a hat drop in alkalinity of 0 0.3 would benefit from dosing or would you top it up with weekly water change? Um, 0 0.3 is not a big deal. If you can do a weekly water change and you only have a 0 0.3 swing, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, even like 0.1 to 0.3 over a day is still pretty darn good. Like if you were hand dosing it, I'd say that's fine. Like within half a DKH, wouldn't worry about. If you're hitting like one DKH plus swing between dosing or water change or whatever it is that at that point I'd be like yeah you might want to look at a doser or stepping up your dosing uh calcium 460 mag 1200 no matter what you do okay so when you're adding mag to your tank you actually need quite a lot of mag to raise it like when you're like oh I dosed you know if you look at you know a gallon of two part could equal you know like a pint or two of magnesium to balance it out so you need quite a lot of magnesium. So play with the calculator, see what it recommends, but you might need a good chunk to raise it back up to where it should be. Uh, Mike P, do you do those red C, A, B, C, D trace colors? On my last tank, I did yes. Um, I have not set them up on this tank, uh, partially because I did my test with the, whatever you call it, test kits, Triton test kits, ICP. Cause I wanted to figure out what I was and wasn't getting from the calcium reactor. So I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm trying out some NIOS kits right now. They're trace elements. And I was also looking at the aqua forest ones. So I may try those. So we'll see. Uh, I liked who else is going to hit that like button. All right, guys, if you enjoyed it, smash that thumbs up button and Kevin. 
If you like what Devin has to offer, please hit that thumbs up and put him help him out on Patreon. Kevin, thank you very much. And Kevin, Kevin and Robert, if you're on here, my two Patreons, I appreciate you guys, so thank you very much. Much, much appreciated. The other thing is, if you guys do enjoy the channel, it does help you out. If you buy stuff through the links, it does help me out a bit because I get a little bit of kickback and I use that for like camera equipment, microphones, and basically stuff to make the channel better. So if you're gonna buy something anyways, wanna use my link, I appreciate it. And Kevin, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, would you agree ATO is a good start for stability? 100%. Um, ATO is one of the first things that you should buy for stability. Um, evaporation will cause your salinity to swing and salinity will also mess with a lot of other parameters because a lot of them are based on the salinity. So 100% ATO is probably one of the best places to start. I mean, you can draw a little line on your tank and figure it out and top it off every day, but I'm a huge fan of automation. Can do it by hand, but automation is great. Awesome. Kevin, thank you again. I'm excited to meet you in person next week. Okay, guys. It is 36 minutes in. All right, I got to roll. I'm supposed to be at a work event, but I felt bad not doing a stream, so here one is. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you, guys. Have happy Wednesday, and I will catch you guys soon. Have a good night. Cheers.